Okay, in this session, we're going to discuss computer reliability, another very important issue. So, computer programs generate errors. Some of them are trivial, like the errors or bugs in the games, or uh, when you uh, write some code for your homework for example and it has some bugs in it and it does not function correctly these are some trivial errors I mean those errors won't affect much uh, on your real life but uh, lots of uh, computer errors are in fact inconvenient ones that cause trouble in our daily lives like the software causing incorrect billings and software bugs uh, which result in also fatalities and these are the most ex extreme cases of course systems we use today typically have many components and one of the components of these systems is the computers so it has lots of other components but computer is just one of them and we should keep in mind that a well-engineered system can tolerate the malfunction of any single component of its uh, uh, I mean functions without failing okay uh, I mean when you consider it like a chair for example here okay you should design your system so that if one of those I mean handles uh, is broken you can still keep this one uh, intact or uh, stand still uh, that's the idea I mean for engineering principles suppose that uh, I don't know whether this analogy is a good one but that's the idea about a well engineered system uh, you should design so that a single component failure will not result in a catastrophe or total system function that's the idea and uh, from lots of experience from the experts in the area and the news from the media we see that computers are usually the weakest link in those systems in many systems where we can comfortably say that computer failures led to software engineering science in the history. Now let's take a look at different types of errors. The, uh, the, the most, one of the most common ones is uh, data entry or data retrieval errors. Here the, the, the system results in a failure because of the wrong data entered or uh, when the retrieved data is interpreted wrongly this one is a real event in 2000 uh, general election in United States again at that time and today too uh, and there was a counting in Florida and thousands of voters are disqualified due to a database error and they say that this error might have affected the outcome of the election because they uh, discovered it later. This is an important example of data entry or data retrieval errors. And the false arrest issue. There are 40 million rec records about the uh, stolen automobiles, uh, missing persons, wanted persons, suspected terrorists and more in United States of course these examples are mostly given from the United States because I mean our textbooks are written by uh, American uh, scientists and authors and this is again a real event where Sheila Jackson's dossier and she is an airline flight attendant she was arrested in New Orleans airport be because of a mix-up with a this name with a person with this name Shirley Jackson wanted in Texas she spent one night in jail and plus five days detention to get herself clear out of this uh, trouble in fact it's it's it results in a false interpretation of data 
And another issue like this, there are of course tens or hundreds of such, uh, f I mean, f false interpretation of data even in Turkey as well. Michigan resident Terry Dean Rogan persons inf uh, Terry Dean Rogan's personal information is used for obtaining a California driver's license. So illegally, they uh, acquired his uh, personal information and a uh, driver's license as well. That person, that uh, let's say particular malicious person, is arrested for two homicides and two robberies. So it's a, it's a very dangerous person. And those crimes were recorded under false identity. Look, because he was using a false identity that time. In a period of 14 months, the real person, which is the Michigan resident Terry Dean Wogan, uh, has been arrested five times by Los Angeles Police Department, of which, uh, and of which three times at gunpoint. I mean, they put a gun in your head. Even though Michigan police corrected the records after the forced arrest, because there was a mistake there, however, I mean, uh, the uh, records are not updated uh, properly, most probably between the databases. And in the end, Rogan sued Los Angeles Police Department and even won uh, $55,000 as fine. Uh, so it's, uh, again, a remarkable case. After this, I mean, incident where uh, the uh, Los Angeles Police Department was being fined to this much of money, the uh, accuracy of National Crime Information Center records has been under fire. I mean, uh, and there was uh, there was some discussion about this, and. As a solution, by stepping away from the Privacy Act of 1974, we discussed this in, chap uh, in the chapter we discussed privacy issues. In 2003, Justice Department announced that FBI no longer ensures the accuracy of information about criminals and victims before entering them to this database, criminals database no longer ensures okay it means that they will they, it's it's impossible to uh, I, I mean uh, file a lawsuit against the uh, police departments in such cases so they're protecting themselves from uh, fines like this uh, with this uh, stepping away from the privacy act that's the idea why the, does this happen? Because Department of Justice argues that it is impractical to be responsible for every single data recorded in, uh, in CIC database because their information sources are very diverse, in fact, because many people flow information there and cause alerts. And FBI has no way of verifying them uh, with guarantee, I mean, so agents use discretion as well. They don't give their uh, real identity. And if uh, this verification is accepted or they could be held reliable, uh, I mean, responsible for the records there, accuracy of records there, the database information will be limited because each data entry to there will be, will require some uh, I mean, clarification. In the end, this database will become a much less useful tool and less criminals will be caught. So it means that we need to step away from the Privacy Act to uh, continue using this uh, NCIC database properly or efficiently. Let's say. This is one side of the coin. And on the other side of the coin, privacy advocates strongly counter that the accuracy of NCIC databases and such databases is more important than ever now, like uh, in today's world. Uh, okay, this false arrest issue is what, just one of them, but there are also other uh, issues here uh, that we discussed in privacy chapter as well. That's the, uh, I mean, you see the two sides of the coin. So there's a clash or dispute about this approach for criminal databases. So pause the video and 
consider about this like take a moment and consider about this look at some maybe news or uh, i mean articles which argument is stronger what do you think what we what would be your idea about this just pause the video and think about it if you want to discuss we can discuss this on the discussion session as well and uh, there is another database one of the oldest databases the, the, the database of stolen vehicles and roughly 1 million stolen automobiles per year in united states and victims are harmed of course but everyone is gets harmed uh, i mean eventually because of the raising, raising insurance costs as well uh, so uh, state crossing has been diminished by using a central database system so you cannot get away by just uh, taking the stolen car out of the state because they share the information and this type of uh, central database increased the car recovery by 10 percent per year and so it means that like 50,000 additional cars could be returned each year and few false arrests uh, I mean are the uh, I mean uh, the uh, hun negative side or I mean the uh, con uh, of this situation and if you make an utilitarian analysis if you uh, transform the cost to dollars for example maybe the benefit can come out more than harm and in utilitarian analysis that kind of approach could be more efficient so you can conclude like this and the software and billing errors so these are other types of errors and we can see a few uh, examples on this as well even if the data entered is correct, the system may still produce wrong result or even may collapse entirely. And newspapers are full of <coughs> stories of bugs and glitches like this as well, in Turkey as well. Uh, look at this, a real event. Uh, Linda Brooks from Minneapolis, uh, a phone, she uh, got a phone bill of, uh, I mean, like, almost uh, sixty thousand dollars and it's result of a, a quest software uh, billing software bug because they installed a new system some customers not only linda brooks many other customers are charged for uh, i mean uh, six hundred dollars per minute for their cell phones and this affected roughly 1.4 percent of quest customers uh, re resulting in uh, 14,000 customers uh, get affected and they receive incorrect bills and they un uh, they say that or they discovered that the bug was in the newly installed billing system there was an and we have lots of uh, similar cases in turkey as well in turkey i mean uh, especially if it's uh, I say government uh, um, uh, department you need to pay the bill first and then uh, uh, put your rejection into uh, a formal in a, into a formal format and another uh, uh, example of software and billing errors is what happened at um, amazon.com in uh, march 13th of 2003 uh, there was a software error again uh, where the ipac handheld computers were put on sale for seven euros instead of this real price uh, to 275 percent euros so there was a mistake in the uh, interface or in the data that need, uh, that has been typed in and uh, of course immediately they realized this and before shutdown the bargain hunters flocked to amazon.com and uh, some even ordering tens of these devices what happened in the end is amazon of course didn't send them but requested difference cost for delivery so if you i mean uh, provide us uh, uh, i mean uh, this much of dollars uh, plus uh, we will send you the required uh, i mean your ordered uh, devices but otherwise they don't send anything 
So pause the video and think about it. Do, do you think what Amazon did was fair or was right as a solution? Think about it. Try to analyze again as exercise if you like. And other, uh, other types of errors are like uh, the errors uh, leading to system malfunction as well in the uh, in a, in this study conducted at University of Pittsburgh uh, they under um, they undercovered that most of the students uh, experience uh, some negative effects from computer spelling and grammar checkers resulting in increased number of errors and they uh, create uh, more trouble than their help like uh, it becomes annoying for students to use them that's the idea we also have an issue with uh, our institution name here where it's uh, is Mirror Yüksek Teknoloji Institute. So I experienced this numerous times that it is automatically correcting this to ileri technology, to uh, high tech. I mean, like this, uh, other than this. so. Uh, this is what I remember from uh, my own experience as well. And what else? Again, real events from Thailand's finance minister uh, trapped inside their BM. W limousine for 10 minutes when the onboard computer system crashed because it's a highly sophisticated car vehicle locking all doors and turning off air conditioning as well and it was I mean they couldn't find a solution and the most blunt solution was uh, the uh, I mean uh, very efficient way to get out of this situation which is a which was the sledgehammer to the window like the same thing happened again in, for our uh, president Erdogan as well uh, w where they again uh, so find the solution as sledgehammer to the window again like this is taken from the media and let's take a look at other examples real examples where we have troubles the new laboratory computer system at los angeles medical center became become backlogged the day after it was turned on so it means that it is uh, it has returned to yesterday for all the records for two days emergency doctors stopped ambulance services because they couldn't reach any laboratory results uh, recent laboratory results here, Dr. Amanda Garner commented that, claimed that, which is very important that uh, I think we will agree. We rely so much on our computers and our fast world technology that we were almost blinded. We couldn't do anything at all without those uh, access to computers and databases. We couldn't do anything because you cannot make records. You cannot access the results. It's impossible. There is no manual backup or manual way to conduct your uh, studies or to, con uh, to continue your work that's a problem in 1999 again a, sof uh, a software error in Ch chicago board of trade suspends trading for one hour and 45 minutes almost two hours and uh, a few months later it happened again like uh, it, it, the first one was one hour and the uh, second one was for 45 minutes although it it may look uh, i mean not a significant uh, duration of time for you but uh, that's a really really important time span for uh, boards of trade or in uh, i mean business because uh, people uh, so, some of the people give decisions for in a few seconds or in a few minutes it's important some so in the end some investors lost money and the same trouble happened in london uh, stock exchange twice within two weeks again in 1990 as well 1999 as well it also happened many times in our uh, istanbul stock exchange as well and uh, it has made to news many times 
And another one is uh, is the trouble happened to Comair, which is a subsidiary of Delta Airlines. Cancel, they had to cancel all its flights uh, in, by Christmas of 2004. Uh, exactly uh, a thousand and hundred flights uh, during Christmas. Why the computer system assigning crews to flights stopped running a crash and in the end their software couldn't handle large number of flight cancellations as well. So again it crashed as well, which it uh, so it in the end it affected like uh, 30,000 travelers and uh, 118 cities. Uh, this is a huge amount of uh, people affected and of course uh, lost credibility as well uh, again from an airline company in 2005 Malaysia Airlines flight from Perth to Kuala Lumpur went on a roller coaster ride uh, seven miles above the ocean why did it happen I mean what, what, and, B B B pilot uh, disconnects the autopilot but th there is a 45 seconds delay since he gathered the main, uh, navigation and uh, up down up so th they were out of level the, the software error uh, coming from a faulty information about plane speed and acceleration another error th discovered later that also causing delay in autopilot disabling that could result in many casualties or disaster but eventually they uh, get out of this with minor trouble but uh, unfortunately we we saw from the news that, uh, that one of the Malaysian Airlines flight were, had been lost in Indian Ocean as far as I remember as well you can look from Wikipedia but I don't know whether it was a computer error or something it's uh, it wasn't clear in another one uh, this time from Turkish Airlines uh, the uh, the flight uh, one of the uh, accidents in uh, the uh, Netherlands in Amsterdam and uh, where uh, uh, the the plane crashed and uh, like nine people were dead and 84 wounded and uh, when the, they discover they argue that this is another case where they have two altimeters to cross check the uh, altitude of the plane uh, it was a genius solution in fact just in, just in case if one of them was not operational the other one will uh, will show you the correct result but the application was poor they argue that the accurate one is not working at the uh, time of the incident and the inaccurate one is working that was the problem uh, they say this but uh, it needs verification of course and uh, this is also another thing okay um, these are some examples of software failures and where some of the software failures are truly documented and very clear and they can be easily t uh, titled as notable software system failures in history. Uh, in those systems, uh, the embedded system uh, use rely on computers and these are used as a component of a larger system and our largest system. here you have your embedded system and the computer used as a component of a larger system and you can have hardware controllers here but they are often being replaced by microprocessors controlled by software in today's world and so why do people do this instead of hardware con controllers and uh, hardware safe at the lux because software controllers are faster they can perform sophisticated tasks more easily than the hardware part hardware uh, components and they can manipulate more data they cost less they use less energy which is another important issue here especially 
uh, a very important concern for space missions for example and they do not be route as well so so if you're relying on hardware they can be route but software is software however uh, this is why people prefer software uh, controllers but uh, hardware controllers have high reliability we should keep in mind where software controllers are prone to errors they're not quite high their reliability we should keep in mind that most of the embedded systems today are real-time systems as well and they they depend on their sensory data and they operate on real time for example the smart airbags in your uh, vehicles here let's take a look at a famous uh, case uh, the pa patriot uh, missile uh, case and uh, from history in 1991 gulf war i remember this war i watched from tv i think it was the first war that has been broadcasted from tv i guess Patriot missiles are United States Army invention and they are used for, they had been installed for defending against Scud missiles launched at Israeli and Arabian properties. At the end of Gulf War, Patriot system has been declared as 95% effective at destroying Scud missiles. Later analysis, but later analysis showed that, in fact, only 9% of the Scud missiles were actually destroyed by Patriots. Because most Scuds are very poorly designed and fall apart even when approaching their target. That's what they find out later. Even when you look at Wikipedia or something, you can still see that this false information is still there. In fact... The Patriot missiles are not that effective. Scuds were very poorly designed. That's what they find out later. What happened? How do we discover this? By true investigation, of course, after a very, very sad event. At 1991, February 25th, a Scud from Iraq, fired from Iraq territory, hit a United States barrack at Saudi Arabia, killing... 28 soldiers where the Patriot missile for defense didn't even fire so they started an investigation that's how they find out the mistake there okay then they under here they use a system like this a multi-check system for false alarms range tracking for multiple checks here the system first makes a wide area research so gets a object here in its uh, I mean uh, area this, this can be a bird this can be a plane and this can be a scud for example that's what they are looking for and then when they lock this they use another step and expect the scud to be here if it's a plane or if it is a bird it can follow a different trajectory but if it is a scud it will most probably fall in this range that's it so this is the second step and finally at the third step at the third step it's expecting the missile to be here so they will conclude that it is in fact a missile and finally the, after this final check they will fire the missile you understand why they do this because it's very important you need to differentiate the scuds from uh, birds and uh, planes of course right you don't want to hit a plane uh, uh, instead of a scud so that would be i mean hell scenario okay and how do they store these range values here Th those range values here are uh, i mean uh, stored at a floating point variable and round of errors are added up during the system run that's a, that's a I mean problem but that is designed like this because you need to make a roundup it's it happens the longer the system runs the round of errors grow estimated uh, grow this 
I mean engineering estimation done at the design time for a few hours or operation runtime. Then you will close it and turn it on again. Then you will close it and turn on. That's how they guessed or how they designed the system for operation. However, during this incident, in, uh, in this incident, the system was operating for more than a hundred hours so it may be a very uh, dangerous situation in battle they never closed it and the accumulation of errors led to 0.3 second difference between the actual and computed time leading to a tracking error of 687 meters this is crazy you see so and uh, here you see the math here i took it from a resource i i give the resource at the end of the uh, slides and uh, the round of error is when you uh, truncate the number to represent it into or put this into a fixed space like a floating point like a 24 bins length so you need to fit it there i mean because you cannot use infinite number of digits there that's the idea and this is how they do the math here for 20 uh, for 100 hours this is the uh, error and when you multiply it for the one hour you end up with this much of error here how do they discover this by true investigation of course since so many people are dead and finally this is the cost of the truncation errors if it is operational for 10, 100 hours uh, first check okay second one is okay then uh, you need to expect this here because of the error but really it should be here so you miss the missile a missile and you don't fire so uh, that was a significant failure uh, i mean uh, in the sense that it was a notable system failure from history where software is uh, guilty here or software is the faulty uh, part here it is pretty common that software is usually the weakest link or the component that produces lots of uh, troubles in this sense okay another notable system failure is about the Ariane 5 rocket it is a satellite launch vehicle vehicle uh, operated by European Space Agency. It has done its maiden flight on June 4th of 1996 and in fact 40 seconds after uh, a so software error uh, after the launch uh, because of a software error boosters and main rocket engine swivel to extreme positions and it got sharply off course core and booster uh, lost contact with each other and as a safety operation vehicle self-destructs itself and the satellites carried uh, by the, uh, on the i mean vehicle is costed about 500 million dollars and they were not insured as well all is lost in, in, i mean uh, we could just imagine about the cost of uh, research and funding uh, used for the development as well why did it happen it is it happened because of an error in converting a 64-bit floating point into a 16-bit integer value so it, it tries to fit this value into this one and it exceeds the maximum storage capacity of the integer value space and since there were no uh, there was no exception handling for this exception this exception and it led to a crash how can this happen why how do we know this because of the investigation procedure carried later in fact the faulty code comes from the arian 4 the previous version of the rocket uh, and uh, this 64-bit floating value to 16-bit integer value conversion is done for the horizontal bias of the launched vehicle. The engineers determined in that time for when designing Arian 4 that uh, the stored value can never be larger than 16-bit integer storage capability. So they never 
uh, I mean coded or programmed an error handler for an error that could not occur. Here, maybe you already heard about this, the Murphy law is, I mean, uh, uh, which was, uh, I mean, uh, credited to Edward Murphy Jr. Uh, if there are two or more ways to do something and one of those can result in a catastrophe, then someone will do it. That's basically the idea. If something has a possibility to go wrong, it will go wrong. That's the idea. And it's especially proper, especially real for software design. We will see. This code moved as it is into Arian 5 design as well for reuse because it was a tried and working code. And it resulted in an extremely costly mistake because Arian 5 was much faster than Arian 4 and values larger than 16 bit integers could be quite common during operation and it happened. So original assumptions didn't hold. Another one is what happened at AT&T long distance network new protocol new switches are introduced. In January 15th of 1990, AT&T Long Distance Network seriously disrupted. Half of the computerized telephone routing switches have crashed, and the remainder hardware-based switches collapsed under the heavy workload as well, resulting in 70 million long-distance calls getting dismissed and 60,000 people lost all telephone service at all and million dollars of revenue lost but most importantly the credibility and the reputation is ruined in the end why did it happen again this is uh, this is uh, i mean uh, learned after the investigation that the network crash Coming, coming from due to a single faulty line of code in error recovery procedure. Let's see. If a server discovers an, an error state, discovers an error state, discovers an error state, it reboots itself, which was a crude but effective way of wiping the state clean. Like uh, we do reset, right? If we're in trouble, it's a, it's a very I mean, reliable. The solution or the most practical solution and after reboot the switch broadcasts an ok message to other switches to let them know that it's back online so if i have a problem i reboot myself and send an ok signal to my neighbors or the all the other switches in the meantime of course when i'm uh, if I uh, rec if I find out that I'm in an error state, I I'm experiencing an error, I also dump my traffic to my neighbors as well, so they won't get affected. The, the clients will not get affected. That's the idea. Here, the error occurs when a very, very busy switch receives an OK message coming from another uh, rebooted server. And when there is a delay in handling that OK message, this time, this condition forces the recipient server into an error state and it needs to reboot itself as well. So, as you see, this, this is pretty obvious that it can uh, uh, result in a catastrophe possibility. On this particular date, System 7 uh, switches, uh, they installed the new version, which is called System 7 switches. Uh, this uh, is given, the name is given to its software version. In the New York City, rebooted itself following an error detection. Okay, the, everything is okay so far. After reboot, it broadcasts online message or OK message to all of its uh, the all of the servers, letting them know that uh, it's up. All OK messages handled correctly, except there there was three very busy switches that time at San Luis, Detroit, and Atlanta, and these switches couldn't get the acknowledgement of that signal and these switches get in an error state as well and rebooted themselves. When they rebooted themselves, they broadcasted their OK messages over the network as well. Now, this is a two-sided problem as I just introduced. When the switch is down, it pushes all of its long distance traffic to other switches, making them even more busier. And when the switch, uh, I mean, uh, comes back and broadcasts an OK message, it, uh, it troubles, it results in a trouble in the already busy switches again and again. What happened is 
uh, like a hell scenario. Some switches started repeatedly rebooting, rebooting themselves under many OK messages and within 10 minutes half of the switches in AT&T network failed completely. Now, why half? The crash could have been worse because AT&T only converted 80 of its network switches to System 7 software. Look, they had left 34 System 6 software switches intact. Uh, I mean, they kept these switches just in case that a trouble can occur, that they didn't crash because they were using uh, uh, well-known or uh, I mean the previous technology software and this saved them uh, from an even more uh, catastrophic scenario so they did this uh, deliberately uh, reducing the damage done on this network so this was another notable case after investigation and let's take a look at robot missions to Mars as well it's again uh, has lots of notable system pillars here Mars Climate Orbiter uh, has been sent uh, to Mars to facilitate communications and send probes on Mars planet and it was a, a 125 million project and the spacecraft is lost because of miscommunication between two support teams on Earth. Look this very interesting, uh, how can this happen? Lockheed Martin, the company running the operation, has two, um, two teams, like uh, the uh, Colorado flight team, operation team was using English units and they are using foot pounds for force, for example, and California flight operation team, I'm sorry, California navigation team was using metric units, which relied on Newton for force measurement. And they were both unaware of each other's preference. This is, I mean, crazy, but this is the truth when they make the investigation. And the program at some point requires input in Newtons, where one Newton corresponds to 4.45 foot pounds impact. So it's a huge difference, as you see. And in September 23rd of uh, 1999, Mars Climate Orbiter approaching the red planet Mars and firing engines required while orbiting uh, in order to not get burned into atmosphere. And since units mismatched here and the navigation team specified almost five times too much thrust to the, the uh, orbiter and the spacecraft flew low and burned into atmosphere, like totally lost. And a few months later, another mission, uh, this time uh, 165 million project, uh, dollar project, million dollar project. Mars Polar Lander, supposed to land on the South Pole of Mars in December 3rd of 1999. Look, just a few months later, lost contact and engineers suspect that software got false signal again and shut down engines 100 feet above the surface. They don't know what, uh, how did this happen, but they just sus suspect about this. And Tony Spear, the project manager of Mars Pathfinder mission, declared this important uh, claim or declared that it is just as hard to do Mars missions now, when is now? It is uh, 1999, as of 1999, like it was in the mid 70s. I'm a big believer that software hasn't gone anywhere. Software is the number one problem in our failures. He, he commented this. Take a moment and think about it. Do you agree or not? Is he right or not? Are they still like what they are in the mid 70s? And okay, let's not, I mean, uh, think, uh, talk about only nightmare scenarios. NASA then successfully landed two hours consecutively in 2003 and 2004, named Opportunity and this one is opportunity and this one was named spirit they greatly they greatly exceeded their goals both rovers were still operational after 19 uh, months so th this was a success uh, i mean uh, successful operation uh, in the